Hello. Hello. Thank you for stopping by and taking time out of your day to watch this video. First things first, I would like to apologize. I'm very sorry for using this cliche title, but I have a lot of updates for the channel. So let's go over them real quick. First things first though, let's introduce a new partner to the channel. My Mac 11 submachine gun. Now I've been doing a lot of thinking with YouTube and whether or not to post this on here. I made a community post saying I was going to post these on Rumble. Rumble's way better and more user friendly than YouTube will ever be. But I also want to give it a chance with members only content and see how YouTube reacts. If I'm able to post full auto content, it's I'm not going to monetize it. So hopefully YouTube won't freak out and do anything negative towards my channel. And hopefully I can post that without any issue. So the plan is full auto content for members only. So if you were thinking about becoming a member, that's what I'm planning on putting on here as well as the early access. I've been slacking a little bit on getting content out, but my focus is to make more quality videos than just kind of rush them out. So I've been kind of rethinking my strategy and how to approach these things. So... Rumble might be the only one that's going to have this posted on there. If I can do members only, this will be on there. So that's the perk that I'm going for is going to be members only content with the machine gun. So hopefully that works out. Next update. At 100 yards, we now have a berm in place. My plan without the berm was just to do small caliber firearms, air guns. But now that that's in place going to step that up a little bit for firearms. I have my AR, I have my AUG, AK, RDB, SKS, Mosin, and a couple other things that I wanted to break out, but I have not been taking them out because I wanted this in place first. The police were okay. They didn't even care if we put that in. There's enough room back there that we have like miles of room between anything, so the police didn't even care about whether or not the berm was in place, but before I stepped up to something crazy, like the Mosin's a pretty serious round, I didn't really want to fire that thing off with without that in place. So that's part of my plan for my updates. Unfortunately, when I do firearm content, it's completely hit or miss on my channel. Well, granted, air gun content is completely hit or miss on my channel as well, but more so the firearms. I'm hoping... Some of that will start to take off. I'm going to try and think of some... Well, I, I'd like to do an intro video for each gun, the PCPs, firearm, whatever. And then think of alternate ideas after I do my initial video. And that's basically what I've been doing with all my air guns first. I had long form videos, but they weren't really legitimate long form videos. So now I'm trying to put out legitimate long form videos for each individual air gun. Now I consider that each individual air gun for every caliber. So if like the Zeus 50 cal, 58, 72, different barrels, smooth bore, rifled, shot shells, slugs, whatever, arrows. Each one of those I consider kind of like an intro to it because it's a separate thing. So once I complete those, then I want to move on to some different type of content. And a lot of people have been suggesting comparisons. So if there's an air gun or something that you want me to put head to head with something else, preferably something on the cheaper end maybe like around like 500 probably no more than like a thousand dollars i can start adding some of these to my collection and then put some of those videos together and we can do comparison videos that's what i'd like to do next after i do my initial introduction runs the next topic is shorts i have a few videos uploaded in early access i think it goes up till october 26th after that date i don't plan on making any shorts going forward I'm going to do a trial period and just see how it works. If things go south, then maybe I'll consider doing shorts again. I have an issue on my channel where it doesn't even matter if I have a million views, like my Rattler video. The average watch time for that video is like 20%. Most of my watch times on my videos are all, I don't even think I have a 30% watch time. It's like 15 to 25%. That's it. So I could have a 15 minute video and the average watch time is three minutes. That's pretty shit, honestly. And I'm not really happy with that. 
out of all my subscribers, 91,000 something right now, I want to say about 70,000 of that is from shorts. And I honestly think that I've negatively affected my channel by getting subscribers who watch shorts content because I'm trying to transfer them over to long form through my shorts, linking in the full videos because all my shorts now are just sections of long form that I highlight and convert over to the nine by 16 ratio to watch on your phone and whatnot. But I think I'm bringing in people from there and they start watching my videos, but they're not interested in the long form. So a 15 minute video, all right, they watch two or three minutes and leave. And I think that's absolutely destroying my reach in YouTube. Because YouTube doesn't want to recommend videos that get 20% views, 20% watch rate. It's looking at that as like some crazy negative. It doesn't matter if it has you know, 10,000 likes or something, or a thousand comments on it, they're going, oh, they're watching your video, but there is pretty much nothing for interest in it if they're backing out at 20% through it. So either that or they're just clicking around and skipping sections. And that's another thing I wanted to go over real quick. I answer every single comment. If YouTube notifies me, I'm going to answer the comment. If you see a like on it or like a heart or whatever and there's no comment, that probably means YouTube deleted my comment because I pretty much always comment on every single thing. There are a few ones that's like, all right, I don't really need to comment. It's just like, it's one of those instances where it just doesn't require it. You just, you know, leave a heart or whatever. But if I get people constantly asking me in a video specific questions that are actually in the video, like... All right, what's the, what's the velocity on this? And we literally do a chronograph test three minutes into the video. You're going to get a timestamp of shame. So if you see just my response is just like a timestamp, I'm calling that the timestamp of shame. Because you came to my video and you couldn't even watch three minutes of it before you asked the question. And I, I'm probably guilty of this when I was younger too. So maybe it's younger people. I don't know. But... It would probably be a good idea to watch the video that you have questions on when the information is given in the video. So watch out for timestamps of shame. One more thing on shorts real quick. If my channel improves after removing shorts from it and people still want to see shorts, I'm debating making a channel just for shorts. So that way, if that's what you're into, you still have the shorts available to you. I just like giving people options. So that's a possibility for an option there. I remove the shorts from my main channel, make a second channel, all for shorts. If the shorts on my first channel somehow make it plummet and it just dive bombs into oblivion, maybe I'll add them back and just see what happens. It's all trial and error. It's all an experiment. I don't have all the answers. I'm just trying different things out and we'll just see what sticks misses whatever now along with experimenting removing shorts from my channel possibly doing it on a second channel i'm going to change my upload date this video will be out tuesday and then after that i'm planning on doing videos fridays here, here here's what used to happen i would post a video on tuesday and it would do decent like it's doing now a couple thousand views but after i post a video now after that first day, like it might do good until midnight my time. So like 9 p.m. in California. The following day, I, I have four month old videos that get more views. It could be like 20 views per hour. And that's more than all my new videos would ever get. After that second day, it's like the video, it's gone. And I have no idea what to do because here's what I used to do. Tuesday, the video goes up, does decent. Wednesday, does decent. Thursday, does decent. Friday hits, the weekend. Then the video would get like this like rebound. Pick up a little bit. But that doesn't happen anymore. Like it, it hasn't happened in months. 
So I'm gonna experiment again and start uploading on Friday. Probably the same time. I might do six o'clock. I'm not really sure. I check my analytics and according to my analytics, 4 p.m. is one of my busiest times till like 8 p.m. Every single day. And that isn't helping anymore. So I'm just gonna have to change that up and just see what happens. The other thing though too is I would like to start doing two videos per week, but at this point, I just don't know why nothing takes off. So then I have to question, is it the shorts like we've discussed, the day that I'm posting it, the time that I'm posting it, is it the type of content people aren't interested in? Because I've done my Zeus video with a shotgun and then they did a follow-up video and the follow-up video did absolutely nothing. And it's a far superior video of it. It performs probably five times greater than the first video, but it just never got out there. And my question is, how do I have one video set up and then I repeat something similar and then the results are completely, completely skewed. One side is massively popular, one side's dead, but it's the same thing and it's an update to it. Similarly titled, similar thumbnail. And if those thumbnails in the title got people clicking, what's preventing them from clicking it a second time? Because it's not like all the people watching it are going to be the same ones returning. It's gonna be all, almost all new viewers. So it's like, there's this market out there but for some reason it didn't hit the second time through. And I've done that with a couple of videos. And one of my other ones that I wanted to bring out was a Rattler, full power Rattler with slugs. And that's my number one video right now. It was with the, with pellets and slugs, lower power setting. I wanted to crank it up, but it's like, all right, that video has over a million views. What's the next one to get? 5,000 and then it's gonna die. And that's just crazy to me, so. A bunch of experimenting going on. Last but not least, we're gonna be working with Discovery Optics going forward. They're gonna be sending out some new optics for me to check out, and we're gonna be doing two videos a month for them. I'm not 100% sure if they want me to go over their older stuff or if it's just the newer stuff yet. I'm not really 100% sure on that. But I wanted to work with them because they have some really good scopes for budget prices. We're talking like a sub $100 to, I think their most is maybe $400 right now. I'm not sure what their new releases will be like, but I wanted to work with them because I know we come from all different spectrums and only featuring high-end expensive stuff is, it's not really relatable. I wanna be more relatable and I use anything from a Deanna Chaser to the Western Rattler. So I have everything covered for he here. Plus, I want to buy some new guns too. So if I've already been over that, if you if you have budget guns, you want me to go over or maybe like mid mid level, five hundred some odd, maybe a thousand dollars max, I'll be more than happy to start getting some guns to compare, especially if it's something you have interest in. So if you want to see what the guns me capable of, I'm going to run through all the ammo possible. If you're looking for a really good scope to go with it, you're going to see the budget gun. You're going to see the budget scope. You're going to see the pellets, the slugs. You're going to have all the information you could possibly want from it beforehand. Gel tests, velocity tests, accuracy tests, everything you could, you could pretty much want. We can do efficiency. We can, we can do everything. It doesn't matter. Just let me know what you want and then we can do it. But working with Discovery, I think it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great opportunity. We're going to get some... I, I want more scopes in people's hands. I know a lot of people like to stick with iron sights or red dots, but if you can get a decent budget scope, it, it's a game changer. And I, growing up, I never used scopes. If I did, I'd have like one and it was a cheapo sub $100 scope that, to be honest, Discovery Optics blows that away for like half the price. Absolutely crazy. Some scopes are, are, are terrible. Like multiple, I'm not gonna name companies, but I have a couple hundred dollar scope 
and I'd prefer the $60 Discovery Optic over it. I'm not even kidding you. Some of these budget options are really good. You get incredible clarity. Zero's perfect, hold zero, no issue. And that's what basically Discovery Optics is right now. And I can compare it to, like I compared their higher end to the Arkin. The Arkin is an incredible scope for the money. And Discovery basically makes the exact same scope for a little bit cheaper. And seeing that firsthand after I have like four Arkins, that that pretty much sold me. Then I use their $60 scope and I'm telling you, the clarity on it was, it was impressive for how cheap it was. A very light scope too. Good, the magnification wasn't bad, three to nine X for 60 bucks. And if there's any setup you want me to pull out, I am definitely glad to take care of that for you. If you want to see X scope from them on X gun, we'll set that up. So you just have to let me know, okay? I think that'll wrap this up for right now. See ya.